May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, my Savior, my Lord, my Rock, my Redeemer. Before I get into the message, I got to give you a God incidence, and I call it a God incidence because uh, I see little things like this all the time in life, and some people like to say they're coincidences, but but I know when they're God incidents. And so yesterday I'm getting ready for the children's message, and I want to go find seeds, and so I go to Walmart, and. They don't have many seeds left. And most of them were for, for broccoli and cauliflower, and I didn't think the kids would maybe want that. So, and they were $1.28, and I haven't bought seeds in a long time, and I thought that was too much. So, so I started thinking about it, and I go, oh, you know what, I'm going to go to the farmer's market. And they'll have seed, and their, their produce is always the best, and it's it's always a lot less expensive than the grocery store, so I went to the farmer's market. I had a lot of produce, but they didn't have seeds. So then I went to Lowe's. I go, well, I'm over there, and so I went to Lowe's, and I go, they'll have seed. And I'd resign myself that I was going to pay $1.28 for a packet of seeds. And so I went, and when I'm walking in the door, Jerry Kolke pops out. Right in front of me. I don't get two feet into Lowe's. And he said, what do you need? What are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for seed. And he said, well, I can help you find seed. And he can help me find seed that actually grows. <laughs> and, and so he took me and he, we found the seed. And then I said, man, you got to help me out. This is for the kids. He said, we can do that. And he went, he knew somebody that knew somebody and they just marked 50% off and they gave us the seeds for half price, which was right in my budget. And so, so we got seeds. Praise God for being there and everywhere and just touching us in great ways. Can you imagine being in that crowd that day? That day, Jesus, when he, he went down to sit by the lake and the crowds gathered and the crowds were so large that he had to go off the shore and get into a boat and talk to him. Can you imagine what the people were thinking and saying? You know, talking about this, this country preacher that's, that they're hearing doing all these miracles in all these different places. And, uh, you know, just, just hard to comprehend. And then Jesus gets up in that boat and stands up and he starts talking to them. And he knows they're not quite ready for the gospel. And so he's talking to them in parables. And he, he talks about the farmer sowing his seed. And he throws some on the path. And the birds come down and eat it. So some of the seed gets spread into the rocks. And they, there's not enough dirt so the roots can't really take hold. So when the, when the seeds grow... They grow fast, but then the sun scorches them and they wither away. And then some seeds are thrown in thorns. And so when the plants grow the thorns, they, they, they crush them and smother them so they can't grow. And then some seeds, though, are thrown onto to fertile ground. And they grow and they multiply 30 times. They produce 30 times, 60 times, 100 times. And then he says, whoever has ears, let them hear. You know, I think if I was there at this point, I may have just been scratching my head. And I'm so thankful that now we have the Bible, the luxury of the Bible. And this is one of the parables that, that Jesus explained to his disciples and explained that, that when, the, when the farmer threw the seeds, the seeds that were on the, went on the path, people didn't really try to understand. And then the evil one came and pulled them up. And the seeds, and I can understand this one, the seeds in the rock. You know, I, I know when I was growing up, when I was young, young, we went to church every Sunday. But 
but we went to church religiously, not spiritually. And, you know, I didn't really let that joy penetrate my heart. And so, you know, when the, it, it, the rock is when it comes up, but the joy isn't there. It, you know, the, the love's not allowed into the heart. And then the, the seeds, now this I can really relate to, the seeds thrown into the thorns. Because when I was a young man, I had thorn all around me, you know, because it's being captured in the, in the things of the world and, and letting them just suffocate you from the word. And I just, I, I, I praise God that the Holy Spirit was such a great gardener that he was a, able to, to take those thorns off of me. And then the seed, the seed that goes into fertile, the fertile soil that, that grows and, and multiplies and uh, multiplies greatly. And, you know, this parable is good news to me. You know, it, it, it's great news to me. Because it, it, it tells me that, that I don't have to be the perfect farmer. The Holy Spirit's going to take care of all that. But I am to throw the seed. We are to throw the seed. And God gives us a great road map to do it. He says to love our neighbors as ourselves. He definitely challenges us in Matthew 28 in the Great Commission to go to all nations and baptize and teach. He tells us to spread the seeds, to evangelize. Evangelism. Well, that's, that's a nasty word for us. That's a tough word for us. It's a scary word for us because of the negative tone put in it in our society. But do you know what the real meaning of evangelism is? The Greek word evangelism means good message. It comes from the same root as the gospel and good news comes from. So to evangelize is simply share the good message. To throw the seeds. To share that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came down and died on the cross for us. For, and rose again for our sin. Because God loved us so much that He wanted, to be with, we wanted us to be with Him for eternity. You know, what's so hard about throwing that seed? It's not our job to make sure that seed lands on fertile ground. It is not our success or failure whether that seed is successful in taking hold. The Holy Spirit is going to take care of that. Our job is simply to throw the seed. One of my favorite stories that I know I've shared with a lot of you, and uh, I'm going to share again is with one of my, my good friends in high school growing up, Tom Douthat. We played sports together. We shot BB guns at each other to see if it hurt. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> we, we were in an armed robbery together. You know, we did the things you do when you're growing up together. And one day, one day randomly, I invited Tom to a Bible study I was going to. You know, I, I can't remember why. Probably we were goofing off and it was time to go. So I invited him. And today, Tom says in his testimony that that was the first time he ever heard the gospel. And Tom is the senior pastor at Bridgepoint Bible Church in Houston, Texas, one of the, the larger churches in Houston, Texas. That seed has gone on to throw thousands and thousands of seeds that the Holy Spirit then can work with. God is doing amazing things here at Christ Lutheran. There is no doubt in my mind he is creating fertile soil. He has definitely brought us together a loving and passionate congregation. 
He has provided us gifts to expand and revitalize our infrastructure. He brought us the laborers for Christ. By the way, they put carpet in uh, at the end of this last week, and it looks it looks good. He has brought us young families. He's brought us children. He supported our school. He's expanded our nursery. He's grown our mission opportunities to Southeast Albuquerque, to the Navajo Nation, to Eastern Europe and beyond, to all nations. And he just asks us to throw seeds so he has the opportunity to grow his kingdom through the love and grace he has placed in our hearts. Not only did he give his son Jesus Christ blood for our sin, but he has provided us the tools to aid us as we share the seeds that grow his kingdom. We are called to be sowers and we are to sow an abundance of seeds. We are called to profess our faith openly to the world and let those who have ears, let them hear. We are called to give our witness, to tell the good news, and to share the message of God with all that we come in contact with. God wants us to throw out the seeds of the gospel, the seeds of his love, the seeds of hope and grace everywhere and anywhere. That is the glorious thing about evangelism. All we are called to do is tell the story, to proclaim what God has done in our lives, and to share his love with others. We do not have to worry about what happens because the Holy Spirit's going to take us and He's going to give our stories power and then work, work it in the hearer's heart to make it true in their lives. We're the sowers, we're not the growers. We're the, the seed slingers. God is the one who will nurture it, water it, and grow the fruit. Now, last week... As I was praying about and preparing for this message, I had to go out to Los Angeles for a video project, which meant I had to find a video crew in Southern California, Hollywood, to help me. Those that know me well know that this is not my favorite thing to do. I really, how do I say this? I, uh, I just don't like the pretentious attitudes and culture in Southern California. And I really, really don't like the Hollywood attitudes in the film industry. So as I began my search, the first crew to respond to me gave me exactly what I expected. We're the best. You don't know the complexities of your project. Oh, we can carve out some time in our busy, busy schedule to accommodate you, and it will be priced at a premium zillion dollars because you cannot do it without us. I sighed, and I told them I would be in touch, knowing that this was going to be a long, unpleasant process. Then my second videographer responded. He sent me an email with a simple picture of his team that simply said he had done projects like this for clients, other clients, and would love the opportunity to serve. You know, I, I, like, I kind of like the sound of his offer. So I emailed him back and said, okay, you know, send me a quote. And then I did my due diligence. He had a link to his website, so I went to his website. And when I got on his website, I was taken aback immediately because on, on his home page, on the first page of his website, it said, as quoted in the 37th Psalm in the 23rd verse, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he is delighteth in his way. Kale, and it was Kale Be Beverly. Kale is humble and gives all honor and glory to Jesus Christ, who God is God Almighty, 
Lord and Savior. Now, I thought this was pretty bold to put this on your business website right in the middle of Hollywood, Southern California. You know, I think a, a, a man of lesser faith would perhaps think that this could cause him to lose business more than gain business. Then Kel Beverly's quote for my project came in, and it came in as fair as fair could be. And obviously I hired him to assist on our shoot. As we worked together, it could not have been better. Now this shoot was kind of an interesting shoot because this shoot was for a, a company that helps Hispanics with their car purchases. So the shoot was the, done of test of people giving their testimonies that had bought cars utilizing the service and was all done in Spanish. Now the only Spanish I know, I, I learned a long time ago and they weren't good words. <laughs> so I keep them to myself. Okay, so there was me, and then there was Kel, an African American, and then there was Francisco, his assistant, who I think was from Central, Te Central America, could have been from Central Texas, but I think it was Central America. <laughs> then, then there was a, a Spanish translator who was originally from Mexico City. And we were, we were taking these testimonies and people were coming in and they were talking in Spanish and the translator was, you know, asking the questions for me and I was just nodding my head saying, yeah, that sounds great, <laughs> you know, looking for expressions. I guess when we edit it, we're going to find out. And... Uh, and then in between, and we had times to, times to share and times to talk, you know, in between. And, and, you know, when we were sharing, we were sharing some stories, sharing some stories of faith. And I got to talk about some experience I had on the, the Navajo Nation and some business that I did there. And, and during this business, uh, I, I did some with, uh, with Paul Jones, who's become a very dear friend of mine. And Paul Jones is the newscaster for the Navajo Nation radio station, KTNN. He's also uh, a Navajo, and he's a Christian missionary on the Navajo Nation, and uh, he's very bold in his faith for the Lord. And it was a it was a wonderful time. At the end of the at the end of the evening, we were laughing and saying, "What an experience of cultural diversity this was!" And we also realized that we were surrounded by the love of the Holy Spirit as well. Then Kel offered to give me a ride back to the hotel. And on the way back, our conversation deepened some. Kel asked me if I died, if I knew for a fact that I was going to heaven. <laughs> I love this because this gave me an opportunity to, to, to share because I know, I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven by the grace of God by Jesus Christ dying for my sin, that I'm going to heaven because of the forgiveness he's given me and not by anything that I've done remotely in any way, shape, or form. And Kel looked at me and he smiled in agreement. It was a great night. But then I was in the hotel and I was laying there in bed just thinking about it all and I realized that Kel who I'd really known for about eight hours and been in conversation with for about a week that he cared that when he asked me that question he cared that, that he really cared about me and he shared our love for our Lord and Savior, brought on by the Holy Spirit with me, and he cared. And I know Kel and I are going to work together again here on earth. But what is more important is I know that we're going to be together forever in the heavenly kingdom as well. And that 
my friends, is what throwing the seeds is all about. Amen.